My name's Kirk Johnstone, and you're watching On The Trowel. Today, I'm gonna to show you how any plaster can easily make 500 pounds in a day. So really, it's quite easy. <laughs> Basically, you just got to organise your diary, right? You've got to you've got to plan things a little bit. But I like to pick up all the little jobs that other plasters don't want. So the little little knickknack jobs, the little patching jobs, they're the ones that I make pay. So we're on our way to the first job now. This is just a little job for the double glazing firm that we do work for, Fortress Windows. Now it's all about planning your diary, right? I know that this is just a little job for to, for today for them. So I've planned it so we can squeeze in two little patching jobs as well as soon as we finish this. So everything now is all about efficiency. We've just landed on the job and we've had the pleasantries with the customer, but now it's time to get cracking. So I want to get this boarded as quick as I can so I can get the sealer on as fast as I can so I can get the bonding on as fast as I can because that needs to set. Once the bonding's set, then we can do the skimming. We can accelerate it to the finish and that means we can be out of here and onto the next job as fast as possible. That's going to go down there. So we said we were just going to bury that in the wall there for him. That's his telephone wire taken care of, but then we realised when we were trying this board up for size that the electrician hadn't been and brought the wire down for the light. So we quickly did it for him and he'll check it when it's done. Oh, and you didn't know Leighton was a stripper, did you? Okay, to help the electrician, we've got to put his little spotlight in for him. He's going to come and check it all before he turns it on. So that is, he's going to get a whole 75 mil. Come on, centre, here. I haven't got whole saw, <coughs> so I'm going to use my little trick. For this I use a little bit of scrim because you can put your pen in one of the squares and that will give you a nice steady little guide. It's half a 75. 37.5. 37 and a half, that's it. So for this, I just mark both sides of the plasterboard to make it possible to do that. I send the screw straight through first time so I can find the centre and then mark and cut both sides. You can use a pad saw for this, but this is what I believe is the neatest way to cut a nice perfect little circle. You'll like this bit. <laughs> uh, voila. No problem. It's like a glove. There's a concrete lintel at the front, and the joist stop before it, so to stop the plasterboard flapping up and down. I'm using some Insta Stick foam, and this stuff is uh, designed for plasterboard as well. Set in about 10 or 15 minutes, and you can just cut the foam off and eat like that. Now, you can use drywall adhesive, but that will take hours to set, and we haven't got hours. So, we'll get the SBR on now so that can start drying, and the next thing will be to get the bonding coat on. Okay, so the house that we're working on has got a cavity. It's not a solid wall construction, which means we can use gypsum-based back coat plasters without causing penetrating and damp. Now, the product I'm using is called Bonding 60, and the idea of that is you put it in and it'll be set within one hour, which gives us enough time to nip off for a little spot of lunch. Now, there's a funny little step in the wall and we've got to join it to the bottom of the coving, so we can't bring it out too much, so I just blended it in there with some back coat plaster as well. But in the meantime, whilst this is wet, um, we're not going to be able to get a solid fix into that, it's a concrete lintel, so we can nail it to the end of the plasterboard. Like this. Okay, because the walls have just been floated, them beads will literally just sit in the wet bond in there. 
to secure them a little bit better. You can just literally just put a bit of stuff over the wing and make sure that they're exactly where you want them. Right, whilst we're letting that bonding set, we're gonna get some dinner. I'll tell you the funny thing, see next door, see that house there? I rendered that one, start to keep going sound, that there, I rendered that, and that one there, that one, both of them. It's like when you drive down the street, isn't it? When, you, when your dad goes, I worked in that house, I worked in that house. <laughs> right, this is the finger plastering, even though we're trying to take 10 minutes and enjoy our dinner, still conscious in my mind, I'm, so it was timing to think right that's setting yeah. that'll be set in the next 20 minutes we need to get back there because it's going to take us an hour and a half to skim it with accelerator because the next job's going to take us an hour. all the time you never get a chance to relax well, it doesn't matter how busy you get we always make time for people Right, so it's time for us to mix up the plaster now. Leighton's put one sachet of accelerator already in the, the plaster. We're going to put another one in now. Um, this job will be done in no time. just wetting up the same stuff for the second coat so that will help that set even quicker <laughs> yeah. when i go to my hairdresser i love watching them all cut hair yeah some things are just therapeutic to watch aren't they it's just great Well, that was very kind of her to say. I remember years ago, I used to hate having an audience, people watching you in case you dropped a little bit. These days, I appreciate the company. <laughs> that said, this plaster is full of accelerator, so there's not much time for chit chat. It's just all systems go. So just to give you an idea on this, we mix the finishing plaster at just gone 12, and it's not far off now. We are... Five to one. It's been an hour um, since we mixed up, or just under an hour. I think another half an hour, and that'll be finished. That's the benefit of using half-time accelerator, uh, especially if you have more of it. You can get jobs done really quick, and you're going to see that more on the next two jobs as well, because this will take an hour and a half. I'll get the next ones done about I don't know half an hour a piece, maybe. We'll see. We'll see when we get there, anyone. Anyway. So that's the first job basically done. So we did a quick trowel and a polish and put the light in. And we won't turn the power on to that. The electrician will come and check that, make sure it's all safe. And then we'll be on to the next job. Right, that's that, all done, finished and polished. Wayne's just going to clean up. There he's on, mate. There we go. So that's the first job of the day done. Um, we've just been paid, so now we need to get along to the next one quickly. Right, that's that job done. Just gone half one, nearly quarter two. So now we've got to shoot across Chester, get to the next job, and uh, that one's going to be a lot quicker than this one. So just having a laugh with Leighton because he's looking at me laughing his head off driving down the road and he's like ah. <laughs> I just said to him he got eyes like a fox looking at me like a serial killer <laughs> right so here we are mate Leighton go and mix up now a handboard's full of bonding 
and he'd bonded out and the SBR out. There's no rush. Any time in the next three seconds will do. So this is the job of voila. The electrician's been on to me. Can I pop in and fix this? So now you see it. What time are we on? It's quarter past two. A little bit of SBR sealer around the patch. I feel like, uh, who was it? Was it? Bob Ross. Bob Ross, yeah. <laughs> A little bit of crimson red. Little dash here. I, <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell what it is yet? But we don't use we don't use him no more because he's naughty. The one that was Rolf Harris. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I thought you were calling Bob Ross a wrong again. So this one, we did that fast. We didn't even film it. We filled it out with some bonding and we used dirty water with accelerator from the last mix and that set pretty quick. And then we got some finish on, also mixed up with accelerator and that set pretty quick. There we go. So now it's half two. So that's... Just shine the camera down there so you can just see how flat it is. See there, that's a high spot in the old wall. So here, come out here in a little bit. Come here, come here, come here. There's a little high spot here. So this now is perfectly smooth with all the surrounding areas. This stuff is magic. That's it, that's done. Right, on to the next one. Come on, come on. Can you pack all that in the van? Now, just remember, that's half open. We'll be using the other half when we get to the next job, okay? So, that's one little patch job. We've got one more to go to. Now, the thing that I do with these little patching jobs is, when a customer phones me, oh, that was for an electrician, and the next one's for a plumber. But I tell them that, look, if I'm coming to do a job, there's a minimum price. I can't come and do anything for less than £100. It's, it's just not worth my time getting me in my van in the morning, driving out, you know, unpacking all my tools, getting all set up for anything less than 100 quid. So, we're going to the other job now. We're going to go to another little patching job for a plumber. We're on the way, on the way there. Sorry. I've got a, I've got a job to look at for a builder. He's absolutely nuts, by the way. He's a lovely fella. He's just got OCDs. He's, I mean, I've got OCDs, but this guy is next level. Lovely fella. But he's actually on the way, so we're going to stop off at his job. And I think he wants us to look at a bathroom ceiling. We're trying to squeeze it in today if it's ready. But we are pushing up the time. It's nearly three o'clock, and we're still going to do another patch yet, so. Right, we won't be doing that one today. There's a bit more involved in that one. See that, see that little window there? Mm -hmm. Right, the bathroom ceiling was flat. That's what I thought we were doing, just a little flat ceiling. This isn't a job for today, by the way. It's just a job that we're pricing up for him. He's took the ceiling out and he's now insulated it and it's vaulted, it follows the same shape as the roof. And if you look on the roof, see the little Velux window? Mm -hmm. You see it on the right there? We've got a plaster all inside that and where the hip comes, uh, sorry, not the hip, the valley where that roof joins the, the main roof of the house. There's like, oh, there's, yeah, it's not a straightforward little job. So that's a job for, I don't know, another day. We haven't even got time to fit him in, but he wants fitting in next week. Let's go to the last job of the day. Oh, it's starting to pile up. That's a bag of rubbish. That's a ripped bag. There's a... Bucket of rubbish up there. Uh, we'll have to have a straighten out. Right, come on, let's get a bucket. Right, this. This is the third job. Somebody's kindly put some foam in there for us, so that saved us a job anyway. Probably took some about two seconds, and uh, I mean, I could just hang a little bauble off it for Christmas, couldn't you? And leave it as it is, but we're going to cut that off, seal round it and patch that up, and then that's it. <laughs> a 
Okay, so because this is made with foam and it's a stud wall, I mean, no one's going to be pressing down here. Ideally, if this was in like a high traffic area, look at me, come back. If this was in a high traffic area, potentially there, you know, then I'd want to dig a bit of that foam out and put some back coat plaster just in case anybody ever went, <clears throat> you know. But down there, I don't think anybody's ever going to touch it. So, what I'm going to do is just cut a, a little bit of mesh to reinforce it, like so. And then we'll seal round it and skim that. Yeah, she's a. Uh, Oh, yeah. so, a little bit of SBR. That's done. Now, for those interested, I'll explain the process of using half time accelerator a little bit better now. We put the other half of that sachet accelerator in this. So that's right, that. We've got half a sachet of accelerator. So it literally will set in minutes. Do you see that here? Mm -hmm. We'll let that first coat pick up. You give it two or three minutes. Just keep testing that this. What you don't want to do is walk off when you've got that much accelerator in this. It'll literally set. Like that. So, I just keep my iron by switching this from time to time, and as soon as it starts to pick up a little bit, I'll literally knock it up again quick and give it another coat. What you want to do is leave that to go off because it's over the scrim. If you start putting another coat straight away on that and trying to trowel it up, it'll drag off the scrim and your scrim will show through. So, you want the first coat to pick up on the scrims first, and then just give it a nice little wet coat over the top for the second coat. Right, this stuff now is starting to pick up a little bit. It's getting a lot thicker. So, just give it a quick second coat over there. It's not the easiest place to get to. But it's one of them places where fellas will always see it. Perhaps the woman of the house probably never will. But it's got to look right because someone's going to be looking at this every single morning, aren't they? Right, wait. Look at me. That's it. People don't just see the buckets. <laughs> right, like, not that finished with. Take that and wash that out quick because that will be rock hard in the next five minutes. And I'll stay and I'll smooth this out. Okay. Whereas normally you'd give it the first coat, the second coat, a flatten in, a wet trial, another wet trial, and a polish. This you just continuously trowel over it, you just don't stop. Right, just give this the last little polish now. So clean down the Now, let's get a cloth waiting, let's just clean around the area, it looks nice and tidy, and that's it. There we go. <clears throat> that's it. That's it. Job is done. Nice one. Let's get everything packed up, and uh, let's clear it off. And there we go. Finished at about half four. Nice and easy does it. Now the materials cost me about £40 for the day. And before anybody gets too excited about that, just take into account that some days you earn decent money when you're self-employed and some days it's absolutely rubbish. You know, you can be on jobs, you get rained off, you can have customers cancel on you, things can go wrong, there's no sick pay, there's no holiday pay, there's no pension, and yeah, you've got to pay your tax and your national insurance out of that, so it's not all that great. But it's easily done with a little bit of careful planning. 
Now, if you'd like a little bit of help to bring in loads of work yourself as a plasterer, then click on the link in the description. I've got a coaching program to show you how to use social media and Google to bring in lots of work. And there's a sales program in there as well to show you how to, to close the customer as well. Also, in that little link in the description, you'll find the, uh, the link to the the clothing range and there's all sorts of stuff in there we've been adding little bits to it there's beanies there's phone cases there's t-shirts there's all sorts of great stuff guys listen it's been an absolute pleasure thanks for watching i'll we'll see you on the next one right i finished just in time so we're gonna haircut with the best barber and hell's me airport right so hi, hello, guys. hi guys you all right i'm kirk and this is Gur. He, he's kirk <laughs> and i'm kirk there we go yes my name. That's what it's all about. Starting to like so someone owns me again. <laughs> that ear is bright red because he's just lit it on fire. Until next time, friends, have a great week.